Namaste and good morning to all of you. Let's uh, start our Sunday class, Gita class, um, with the, some verses uh, first, uh, which is called Gita Dhyanam. We are thanking Vyasji who wrote this Bhagavad Gita, thanking Lord Krishna, thanking this great scripture itself. Om Parthai Pratibodhitam Bhagavata Narayan Swam Vyasena Gratitam Puran Munina Madhe Mahabharatam Advaitam Ritvashini Bhagavati Mashtadashadhyayani Amutvamanu Sandhami Bhagavat Gita Bhavadveshini Namu Astute Vyas Vishal Buddha Full Arvind Ayat Patranetha Yena Tavya Bharat Tail Purnaha Prajwalito ज्ञान में आप प्रदीपा पर पान पारी जाता है तो त्रवेत्र एक पाने ज्ञान मुद्रा है कृष्णा है गीता अमृत हुए नमः सर्वोपनिषदों का वो दोगदा गोपाल नंदना पार्थो वत्सा सुधीर भोगता दुगदम गीता अमृतम महत्व वसुदेव वसुतम देवम कंस चानूर मर्दनम देव की परमानंदम कृष्ण मुवंदे जगत पुरम भीष्म द्रोम तटा जय गाधार नीलोत पला शल्ये ग्रावती कृपेन वाहने करने न वेला कुला अश्वत्थाम विकर्ण घोर मकरा दुर्योधन अवर्तने सो तीरना खलु पांडवे रणदी कवर्त का केशवा पारा शरी वच्चरोजमलम गीता अर्थनंदोट कम नाना ख्यानक केशरम हरि कथा संबोधन अबोधितम लोक के सज्जन शटपदे रह रह पेपिए मानम मुदा भुयाद भारत पंक जम कली मल प्रधन से नशे यसे मुकम करोति वाचालम पंगुम लंग्यते किरम यत्रिपात ममंदे परमानंद माधवम यम ब्रह्म वरुण इंद्र रुद्र मरुतः सुनवंते दिव्य स्तव वेदे सांग पद क्रम उपनिषदे गायन्ति यम सामका ध्यान वस्ते तद्गते न मनसा पश्यन्ति यम योगिना यस्यंतम न विदुसुर असुर गना देवाय तस्मै नमः we started chapter number four. Gyan Karam Sanyas Yoga. And last week we ended our class with verse number seven and eight. And I told you these two verses, they go together. So let's look at verse number seven first. Very popular verse. A lot of people, they have memorized this. Because Lord Krishna is giving us the reason why he comes, why avatar come again and again on this earth? He says, whenever there's a decay of righteousness, O Bharat, and a rise of unrighteousness, then I manifest myself. Okay, yada yada hi dharmasya galani bhavati bharat. There's a decline in the dharam. Abhyutanam adharmasya tada atmanam se jane raham. So you see, I come again and again. So whenever there is a decline of dharam, there is always a reason for God also to come over here, not to do anything. So then, what does he do when he comes? Paritra nai sadhu naam. Vinashaya chadushkritam. Dharam sansthapna arthai sambhavami yugre yuthe. Paritra nai, for the protection. Sadhu naam. Of the good. Of the righteous. Vinashaya, for the destruction, to annihilate. Chya means and dushkritam. Of the wicked. Dharam. Dharam means the eternal law, eternal religion, or the righteousness. Sansthapan or thai, to establish or to re establish. Sambhavami, I appear. Or I'm born, I take a form. Yuge, yuge. Age after age, or in every age, 
So Lord Krishna says, for the protection of the good, for the destruction of the wicked, and for the establishment of dharam. I am born in every age. So three reasons here, he is giving it to us. So for God's dissension in the world, because of these three things. Number one, to inhalate the wicked, to protect the pious, that is the second, and to establish dharam. Okay, so this is the purpose for God to come. Even though God is everywhere, but in order to do something, he has to take a form. And this, without a desire, nothing can happen. So he says, this is my desire. When I come over here, a very divine desire. It is like a selfless thirst to serve the world. But still it's a desire. This is his world, his creation. He wants to take care of it. So in order to protect the good, it's almost like a godly career he takes in this maya. And to destroy the wicked. That means removal of the wrong tendencies in the individuals. Because it's not the Atma is annihilated. Atma can never be annihilated. But the wrong tendencies, he comes over here to show us the right way of living. Get rid of the wrong tendencies. So that's why the prophets also, the avatars also, when they come, they encourage the good. Okay. They eliminate the poisonous specimens from the garden of life. This is what happens. And if you look at Lord Krishna's, the whole life story, how many rakshas, how many demons he destroyed. Okay. And why Lord Krishna is giving this bit of his autobiography? Let's look at verse number nine. Janam karam chame divyam evam yameti tatvata tyaktva deham puna janam na eti maam eti sa arjuna. Janam birth, karam means action, cha means end, me my divyam divine. Evam means thus, ya means who, veti knows. Tatvata, in true light, in essence, tatvata. Tyaktava, abandoned. Deham, the body. Punha, again, janam is birth. Na eti, not gets. Maam, to me, eti comes. So means he, arjan. So Lord Krishna is saying, he who thus knows. In true light. In essence, my divine birth and my actions. Having abandoned the body, that means after leaving this body, he is not born again. He comes to me, O Arjan. Okay, so he is giving us the reason why we are here. And what do we need to do? But the goal of life is to, to know him in essence. Yaveti tatvata. So Lord Krishna is declaring that those who by constant contemplation understand the divine birth and the activities, janam and karam of the Lord. A contemplation. It's not just only theoretical knowing. It's knowing in reality. So this is not a mere understanding the way we understand the worldly things. So tattvata in true light. So that means we have to experience. It has to become our subjective experience. In order to experience God, we have to experience ourselves also. In reality, who are we? That is tattvata. For this, 
we have to do the sadhana. Upasana is a part of it. Dhyan is part of it. Samadhi is part of it. Seva is part of it. In order to know ourselves subjectively or know God subjectively, or the way he is saying, Yaveti Tatvata, all of that sadhana is needed. So a person who is practicing sincerely, wholeheartedly, this goal is available. So that means it is available to all of us. Whether we start from the upasana, upasana of a sagun or irgun does not matter. Sagun is a form. It becomes a little easier when we do the upasana with the help of the form because then there are stories also. We just again and again remember the stories how Lord Krishna was born. What did he do? How did he help? So many people. How did he? Why did he take birth? So sagun now. Sagun becomes a little easier. Okay? That's how with the help of the upasana or by going through this again and again, these stories, our mind gets cleansed. Because we are engaging our mind in the devotional remembrance of God. Because whenever we remember the Maya, it gets tainted with the Maya. When we remember God, then it gets purified. So this devotion can either be toward the formless aspect of God or towards his personal form. But as I said earlier, the devotion towards the formless, towards the intangible, is difficult for most of the people. Because this mind wants to focus upon something. So when we have a form, then we feel connection. Okay, it's tangible, it's simpler. So such a devotion requires definitely divine sentiments towards the personality of God. And that's why we have to understand our actions. What is the difference between our actions and God's actions? Because most of our actions are selfish. Here and there, even if we do selfless actions, but still there could be some selfish motive behind that. But God's actions are always selfless. And that's what he said in the last verse. I take birth to help the good, to establish the dharam, to inhalate the wicked. Our actions are, we got to look at it. We got to dissect our actions. We got to see how much self-interest is there. How, how much self, like a personal fulfillment is part of our actions. In God's actions, no personal motive. It's always to help us. Okay. So now in the next verse, he says, Vita Rag Bhai Krodha Manmeya Maam Upashritaha Bahava Gyan Tapasaha Utaha Mad Bhavam Agata. He says, Many people have attained this ultimate goal. And over here, he is telling us how to gain that so that we don't have to come here again and again. Vita Rag Bhai Krodha. Rag is the attachment, bhe is fear, krodh is anger. Vit means free from. So freed from attachment, fear and anger. Man maya, absorbed in me. Maam means me. Upashrita, taking refuge in. Like a upash, like a ashrit, surrender. Taking refuge in. Bahava, many. That means many people. Jnana tapasaha, by the fire of knowledge. Utaha, purified. Madhbhavam, my divine love, my being. Madhbhavam, agata have attained. 
free from attachment and this attachment means attachment to this maya this world free from attachment fear and anger absorbed in me taking refuge in me purified by the fire of knowledge many have attained by being because sometimes we think no it is so difficult to attain that goal the goal which he is mentioning in the last verse when he says tatvata in reality who know me he said this is how you will know me this is the little secret he is telling us because first of all attachment is the root cause of the mind getting dirty attachment so this attachment to the maya we are talking about when the same mind gets gets absorbed into god it gets purified when it gets attached to the maya it gets dirty same mind so the entire path of self development and the final goal which we need to be reached is indicated in this verse without without renouncing attachment to this world it is not possible that is the very first thing get detached that's why virag is important virag is one of the qualities we need to cultivate because rag is the one which which disturbs our mind and with a disturbed mind progress is never available to us but once this mental discipline is gained only then we can absorb our mind in god man maya the idea of self perfection and only then we can take refuge in god and that is the next thing he said upashrita surrender only there we can even hope for any victory and then with that kind of a mind we can definitely study gyan tap saha the fire of knowledge so over here the technique of self development is given to us a step by step and if you just summarize it there are three things he is telling us first is after doing that a purification and all that we got to study the scriptures also so that is a gyan tapsa study of the scriptures because when the mind is calm we have taken absorbed our mind into the god and we know this is the goal we want to study then after studying there has to be independent analysis of the scriptural truth by ourselves so that we can understand it so that's what the tap is gyan tap sure studying is a tap but then reflecting upon it that's a mental tap and then slowly and steadily we bring all that into our personality so it's like a single pointed meditation also so gyan tapsa has these three stages okay our rishis they called it shravan manan nidhi dhyasan only then it becomes set up gyan da so it's like he is giving us a recipe to clean our mind for, from the defects of the lust anger greed etc because those are the enemies we got to detach ourselves from the world and attach ourselves to the supreme other scriptures they also called all this as a mal as a dust as a flaw as a problem there is a saying in ramayan it says 
तुलसीदास जी रोलते सर <coughs> प्रेम भक्ति जल बिन रगराई अभ्यंतर मल कभू ना जाए Okay, this mal, this flaw in a, in our personality, and flaw is what to, to get attached to this world, to be afraid, to worry. All that is flaw. So he says, without devotion to God, prem bhagti jal. They call it a jal. Without devotion to God, the dirt of mind will not be washed away. Okay, so we have to clean our mind. And then another thing we see over here that he says many have attained my being, so that should encourage us. If others have done it, if I apply the same technique for my development, I can attain it too. Sure, there are different paths, but whichever path I choose, I can do it. Having confidence in yourself, do the sadhana wholeheartedly. Ye yatha maam prapadyante. तान तथा एव भजामि अहम मम वर्ते अनुवर्तन्ते हे मनुष्या पार्थ सर्वशः ये मिन्स हु यथा इन व्हाट एवर वे माम मिन्स मी परपद्यन्ते अप्रोच तान देम तथा आल्सो एव इवन भजामि रिवार्ड और रेसिप्रोकेट अहम आय मम माय वर्तम पैथ अनुवर्तन्ते फॉलो ट्रेड मनुष्या पीपल पार्थिस अर्जुन स्नेम सर्वशा ऑलवेज और इन ऑल रिस्पेक्ट्स सर्वशा इन व्हाट एवर वे पीपल अप्रोच में इवन सो डू आई रिवार्ड देम माय पैथ People tread in all ways. Oh, part. Okay. So, in all ways could mean that knowingly, unknowingly, we are just walking on this path. So, so in other words, he says, I lend my power without any partiality. In whatever form they invoke me, in that form. I help them. So there are many, many forms. Even Lord Krishna's, we see many forms, and then we have many, many forms of God, different forms also. So it all depends upon what instrument we plug into it, and the and electricity we get the same electricity in different equipment. Some equipments will get the heat from it. Some equipments will get the light. Some equipments coolness, but the energy is the same. The same way God's energy is same, different forms. This is I'm the one who gave. So the unmanifest eternal force of life can be invoked, and it can fulfill our desires according to the type of our invocations. So he says, I reciprocate. With everyone, as they surrender to me, even the worldly things we want, worldly things, and we invoke, we pray to God, and we do get that. But when we can pray to God for Himself only, then we get Him also. So it depends what what do we really want from God? Okay. So, so another thing he's actually mentioning over here is whether it's a Saint or a sinner, actions are done with my energy. Actions, okay. So it's not a different atma in a saint and different in the sinner. Atma is the same. The equipment is different. So he says, "I am the one who is giving it whatever they want." and let's look at number 12 over here he is telling us that uh, what is that ordinary people do not desire to seek the lord 
Why don't they want the infinite? They just want only the finite, even from God. Kankshantaha karma naam siddhim yajante ih devata kshipram hi manushe loke siddhi bhavati karma cha kankshanta longing for karma naam actions the activities siddhim success yajante worship or sacrifice ih means here in this world devata the celestial gods Kshipram, quickly. He means uh, in detail. Manushe, in the human. Loke, in the world. Siddhi, success. Bhavati, is attained. Karamja, born of action. They who long for satisfaction from actions in this world make sacrifices to the gods, the devatas. Because satisfaction is quickly obtained from actions in the world of objects. So it's like we see the reward quickly. So that's why people just go after the quick reward. They pray to the Devata for certain outcome, material outcome. Even though the Purpose of this life is to attain Godhood, to know Him. Just like He said earlier, Tattvata, in essence, to know God, that's the purpose of life. But uh, most of the people, He says, in this world, they just go for a smaller rewards. And smaller rewards can be gained very quickly. And mind, our mind, since it's made up, of material nature, the maya, it chooses only extrovert things. It is easy to gain cheap pleasures by satisfying the sensuous tickling of nerve tips. And we just fall for that. So human beings, people, they worship God in the world because they want immediate fruits in terms of the player from their activities. That's what Kankshantaha Karma Naam Siddhi. So these Karma Naam means the material activities. Okay. It's like an immediate reward we feel. We get it. We all know that when the sense organs, they contact the sense objects, there's an immediate reward. And we just lose a sight of our ultimate purpose. Okay. But the celestial gods, is devtas also, they give a boon only by the powers which has been bestowed upon them by Supreme Lord. God. But people with small understanding approach them. And those who are intelligent realize that there's no point in that. After going for this finite pleasure or essential pleasure, ultimately a person says, this is not what life is all about. And those are the wise people. Okay. So Lord Krishna is explaining why majority of us, in spite of our best efforts, live a life of animal passions. This is what he's trying to tell us. Because the success comes out quickly over there in this human world. Okay? And then in the next verse, he is further explaining it to us. These extroverted people, they can be divided in four types on the basis of their distinctions of the textures of their thoughts and actions. Four kinds. Chaturvarnyam meyasrishtam gunakaram vibhagshah tasye kartaram apimam vidhi akartaram avyam Chaturvarnyam Four categories of occupations or the fourfold caste also. Varan is caste also. Maya by me. Srishtam has been created Gun karam vibhagsha. Gun is the quality. 
Karam is the action, Vibhaksha, the vision. So according to the differentiation of Gun and Karam. Thus say, thereafter, Kartaram, the creator, the author. Api means also, Mam means me. Vidhi, no. A Kartaram, non doer. Avyam, unchangeable or immutable. He says the fourfold caste has been created by me according to the differentiation of gun and karam. According to the gun and karam. Gun, gun, guns are the qualities sattvic, rajasik, tamasik. Okay, karam is the action. Though I am the author thereof, know me as a non-doer and immutable. Okay. I have created it, but I am still a non-doer. So these distinctions, whether we call them classes or whether we call them castes, they are recognizable based upon our own temperaments. And there are four kinds. No matter where we are, we'll see these four different classifications. Could be based upon our trade or profession. Okay, but trade or the profession we choose based upon our own temperament. Based upon our own qualification. Okay, so these are the four castes. This is a, a, if we want a well working society, we need these glasses. Okay. And we got to, there's no competition between these glasses. If all these units, they work with the full cooperation, the society can run better. And there's no, Higher or lower, they all need, just like in a body. Head is needed, feet are needed too. Hands are needed, eyes are needed too. So not one part is more important than the other part. The same way in a society. That's why Lord Krishna says, I'm the one who created it. This is a complete definition of the world. Because there's a lot of misunderstanding with the term Varna. We think that it is a very rigid. Only a Brahman son can be, be born from a Brahman father. No. We all have our own temperaments. In any family, there could be could Brahman father and there could be a Vaishya son also or the other way around. We all have traveled many, many lives. And we have given the colors to our temperament again and again and again. And in one lifetime, we can change it too. So that freedom is there. Freedom to move from one profession to the other. Or in certain areas, we, we can be a Brahman. And then in another area, we can be a Vaishya also. So... In order to run this society beautifully, we need all this. So Lord Krishna says, I'm the one who has created it. Okay, he alone is a Brahman. We know we will learn about it more in the future chapters also. What are the qualities of a Brahman? Who is called a Brahman? When the thoughts are predominantly sattvic, that's a Brahman. Then his actions should be like that too. <clears throat> Not just only the thoughts, the actions. Kshatriya is the one who is mainly Rajasik in thoughts and actions. Shudra is whose thoughts are and actions are Tamsik. He lives a life of lower endeavors for satisfying his passions. So according to the differentiation of Gun and Karam, he is talking about Gun and the Karam. So then another thing in this verse he says, uh, 
that I am the author of it. I am the creator of it. Same time he says, I am a, a non-doer. So that means this Prakriti is created by me. All of these temperaments belong to the Prakriti. But me, the self, the God or the soul is a non-doer always. So that means all the actions are done by Prakriti, not by soul. So I am always a little away from it. So the creation of the temperaments, which should be attributed to the mind and the intellect, is attributed to the Lord. So it's like a Atma is not a Brahman or a Kshatriya or a Shudra or a Vaishya. Okay. Atma is a, that spark of Brahma, which is always pure. So this is the point he's trying to make it over here. It's not just him alone, but in our own personality also. Atma is a non-doer. Na maam karmani lipanti, na me karam phale sapriha, iti maam ya abhi janati, karam abhi na sabadhyate. Na means not, maam means me, karmani actions. Limpanti hi taint. Na means not, me mai karam phale, the fruits of actions. Sapriha, desire. Okay. Iti means thus, mami yahu abhi janati knows. Karam abhi by actions or the results of the actions. Karam abhi. Na means not, sahi badhyate is bound. He says actions do not taint me. Nor have I any desire for the fruits of actions. He who knows me, thus, is not bound by his actions. Okay? So that means God is all pure. Whatever he does also becomes pure and auspicious. Because a taint over here, taint really means some kind of a flaw. Or over here it means desire. Because this taint can come only to an ego. Okay? So when the subtle body is tainted by desires, what happens? Agitations are there. Okay? That's what happens. Agitation. That it just gives us a little fluctuation over there. Then the ego in it seems to be played upon by these two. Okay, so agitations or the desire. <clears throat> it's almost like a, if there's a pool of water and we are seeing the reflection of the sun in that pool of water, if the water is muddy, we won't be able to see the reflection clearly. And if the water is moving, still we won't see the reflection clearly. We cannot say that there's a taint in the sun or the sun is shaking, or the sun is not clear. Sun is clear all the time. It's shining, only the reflection. The same thing, the Atma in us. All we are seeing is, we are feeling it through our taints, through our agitations. And we, do, we don't have a clear idea of who we are. So the ego suffers sometimes, with our evil tendencies, and that is the taint of the mind. It gets disturbed through our desires for the fruits of action. So these are the two things he's mentioning over here. Okay, So fruits of the actions, that really creates a, a lot of disturbance in our mind. But uh, self in its pure nature, like a, a, the should, the Buddha, Atma, it does not get affected by that. It is a Shuddha Buddha. In a sinner also, in a saint also. 
these disturbances don't touch the Atma. This is the point he's trying to make over here. But we just only look at the reflection of the Atma. So that's why when he says, he who knows me thus, that means the one who has renounced his identification with his limited ego has rediscovered himself to be none other than the self, none other than part of God. And this is what Abhijanati means, knows. Abhijanati, there's a special connotation to this uses of this word Abhijanati. See, ordinary knowing, how do we know something? We know and we think we are the knower of an object. Over here, Abhijanati means you are knowing it subjectively. So when the soul, the self is rediscovered, recognized during the subtlest moments of our deep meditations, only then we come to know our real nature. And that's what Abhijanati means, knows. So not as an object of knowledge, this is a knower in us, knowing the knower in us. Okay, there's a, there's a sense with words. If we know the real meaning of it, then uh, it really hits, hits us clearly. Okay, so there shall be... See, when, when we know something, abhijanati, then there's no doubt left anymore. See, when we know some object, it depends on which angle we are looking at. That's in knowing something objectively. Because sometimes we look at it from one side, it looks different and we start looking from the other side. Like even a letter six, don't they say that? If you're standing on one side, it looks six. On the other side you go, the same number looks nine. So that's in knowing something objectively. But we know something subjectively. Then there's no doubt left at all. And doubt is one of the taint. Okay. So let me read it again. Because these verses are very deep verses. Uh, there's a, a, a lot embedded in here. Actions do not taint me. Now we got to look at it. Our actions. We do actions all the time. We are in a karam yoni. Do our actions taint us? Do they fluctuate our mind? Certain actions, we just jump up and down with happiness and certain actions, we might go into depression. So he says, actions do not taint me, nor I have any desire for the fruits of the actions. So Lord Krishna is saying it. So if we want to become one with God, because that is our goal, so this is what we need to practice. And this is what he taught us how to do in the last chapter. As a karam yogi, we should not do the karams for the fruits of the actions. That should not be the motive. So actions do not taint me, nor have I any desires for the fruits of actions. He who knows me, so that means he who can do the actions like this is not bound by his actions. So that means that kind of a yogi will do the actions also without first thinking that I am doing it and not for the result either. See how beautiful this verse is. So a lot of deep message in there too. He's not saying don't do the action. Because over here, if you remember, Arjun didn't want to do the action. And with all these teachings, he's telling Arjun, do the action the way I do the action. Because you are supposed to do the actions. If you don't do the actions, the future generations will copy you. Or these people, they'll call you a coward. 
you got to learn how to do the actions and still stay untainted do the actions the way i do it i do it all without getting any taint okay so whatever way we can understand it bring this this wisdom in our own life let's do one more verse then we'll stop evam gyatva kritam karam purve api mumukshu bhi kuru karam eva tasmat tvam purve purvataram kritam evam das gyatva having known kritam that means performed or was done kritam karam actions purve by the ancients api also mumukshu bhi seekers of freedom mumukshu kuru perform karam duty or action ev means even tasmat therefore tvam yu purve by ancients purvataram in the olden time kritam dan having known this the ancient seekers after freedom moksha also performed actions therefore you too perform action as did the ancients in the olden times so goal of life is the moksha complete freedom the liberation he says in the old times see first he gave his own example this is what i do but look at it he said the other people the great people they acted like this without any personal desires without any attachment to the fruits he says they attained the moksha so can you say look at the the gratefulness of uh, these teachings step by step he is telling us how to attain the goal not by running away from our duties but doing our duties wherever we are as a yogi and he is giving us example over here he said there is nothing new in the path of action all seekers of the moksh in the past they followed the same technique and then we'll see next week he'll tell us that yeah sure there's a great difficulty in understanding the karam but i will try to explain what karam is he will go into the definition of the karam a karam and a vi karam he says it is difficult but i will help you but goal is the enlightenment and after even attaining the enlightenment you have two options okay two options either to come back again god's wish is god's creation that's why lord krishna was here that's why lot of gurus lot of avatars they come because this world has to run the universe has to run and we need exemplary people so that's what he is okay so but uh, let's stop it here and we'll uh, open up for discussion also and we'll start our next class with verse number 16 om purnamada purnamidam purnat purnamudachyate purnase purnamadaye purnameva visheshyate om shanti 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 om thank you very much